welcome to Dynamite Delight in full 1080p. You're welcome. I decided to do 1080p this time around instead of 720. Just to see if it's going to come out right and not too big of a file to up to load to. Um, I guess the reason why I'm botching this is because I tried to film this three times and I botched up. Because I'm a little worried about this one because not that I can't make the video. I might like to do it more often because <laughs> I like it. I like the, the file size small, but that's just me. Anyway, we got a very interesting show. It's in Long Island, New York City's little separated area where the, the rich people go. <laughs> anyway, what do we get in this show? We actually got a good show opening MJF and it's. Not MJF. It's CM Punk coming out to his music, which is actually a, if you don't know this, you probably do. But if you don't know, MJF's music is actually on the YouTube audio library. Anybody can download it and anybody can use it. You can. I don't have it because I haven't needed it. But if I ever need it, I can grab it from YouTube and use it for free, baby. And he comes out and he does the one thing so many people have been inspecting from him. The bastard is back. Mr. Pipe Bomb gave himself a little bit of a tease. In other words, he decided to come out and be a heel a little bit. And try to put a little bit of MJF over, which he wasn't at the same time. He just wanted to fuck with people, guys. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Now, most people say, dude... Um, he insulted Long Island. He insulted New York. He insulted, he insulted me. <laughs> Understand something about New Yorkers. We don't always get insulted because you talk about another borough and about a sport that most don't give a damn about. Now, mind you, I'm not saying anything's wrong with hockey. I'm not. But he is kind of right when it comes to the Islanders. They have not won shit. Not since I was a teenager in the 80s since they won something. So I don't really give a damn. But anyway, he healed it up. He did. But he wasn't lying. He wanted to make sure you understood he's going to do what he's going to do. MJF has always avoided him. MJF has always screwed around. MJF has always done his business with help. Come mess with me. Come at me, bro. Come on. Bro, come at me. He made it that clear. He was kind of hoping he would come out, but he didn't come out because he was going to be in the Dynamite Diamond, what is it, Diamond Diamond match? The Basically the 12-man battle royal, which we'll go to right now. And MGF was in there, Jay Lethal was in there, you got a little bit of Dante Martin, a little bit of uh, Frankie was barely even in the damn thing. You did see a little bit of Warlow, a little bit of a, a, a powerhouse Hobbs. Hamming at each other. So you got Team Taz a little bit going up against the Pinnacle a little bit. Which actually would have been kind of interesting. If you turn the Pinnacle face or Team Taz face, that would be a little interesting to see these two teams butt a little bit of heads. But in the end, you get MJF not only eliminating a little bit of the Pinnacle, but also a Team Taz. Because he did eliminate them. In the end, what did we get in my face? You get MGF, you get Ricky Starks, and you get a little bit of Dante Martin. And in the end, Dante screws over Ricky Starks, and is now the last person in the damn match. And MJF was so happy, he raised his hand, he was proud of him. But MJF, while walking back, looked back, well, walking forward, looked back, and saw that a little bit of Ricky Stark was trying to whoop his ass. And he was like, what the hell am I supposed to do here? I'm a heel. What am I doing? Am I going to help this guy? Yeah, he gave me my shot to be able to get my, my diamond ring for a third time. But am I supposed to help him? I'm a heel. And eventually, he jumps back into the ring. And he gets dead in the face of a Ricky Starks. But guess what? He doesn't really get in the face of Ricky Starks. Because they both start pounding down on him. And then in the end, CM Punk comes to help him out. And that's Dante Martin, who now has pissed off Taz so much that his contract is null and void. And supposedly, I'm only, I'm briefly saying this, 
Hook's showing up on Rampage for his first match. I'm only going to say that because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how far he's gone. I'm not saying no more. Now, we get an eight-man tag. Why? Why? Yes, I understand that they are doing something with 2.0 Garcia. And they are doing something with Jurassic Express. Y yes. And there's something going on with the Varsity Blondes. And something going on with the Acclaim a little... Well, actually, nothing's going on with the Acclaim. They're just working. And the Varsity Blondes, they're just working. It's mostly 2.0 Garcia and also Jurassic Express. But it's not about them. It's just that they're being spotlighted on Dynamite. So you got an eight-man tag with two teams who are being spotlighted on Dynamite on mostly a regular basis right now for the last month or so. Then you got Varsity the Blondes are not really being spotlighted at all. And the acclaim, which comes in periodically, I'm not taking anything away from Bowman. I'm not taking away anything from his partner. They're actually more interested in the Varsity the Blondes, even though Julia Hart is gorgeous, and I will say something about her in a moment. Why do I care? I'm sorry, you don't see them much. They don't show them on Rampage. They only show them on Dynamite very rarely. So I'm not going to be interested in them. But it doesn't mean they're bad teams. It's just I don't see them often. And if anybody says, dude, watch Dark and Elevation. No. I don't got time to watch Dark. I don't have time to watch Elevation. As well as try and get and understand this. If people say, if you don't see these guys, you need to see them on Dark or Elevation. I'm saying, no. Understand, I'm a wrestling reviewer. And I also do animation on the side. So I still, I work on my animation all around time. I'm always working on it. I'm actually working on it once I finish this. Then I film for a Gump Report, which I'm not doing right now this month. Next month I'll do it. Right now I'm still doing the booking, the rest of the stuff. Then when I get a chance to see NWA, which I haven't seen it yet because it hasn't come out for me yet. Then I do Dynamite. Then I do Impact Wrestling. Then I do Rampage, and if there's any pay-per-views, I also do them. So I do animation, my Gunt Report, or in this case, Book and Wrestler, NWA, Impact Wrestling, AE AEW Dynamite, and AEW Rampage. Not talking about any pay-per-views, or something else that may come up that I may do some research on. That's too much. For someone to be watching. I'm not obsessive. Okay. Let's move on. Was it a good match? It was okay. But I wasn't surprised to face win. Now, mind you, after that was over, we did get a... a I was going, wait a minute, there's something about to happen. Why would you show the Varsity Blondes just over an eight-man tag? Why? What was the point? And then the lights go out. Lights come back on. You see Malachi Black, and you think he's going to attack a, a Pillman Jr. or a Garrison. No. He missed a, a heart in the face. A Julia Hart gets sprayed in the face. So what does this actually mean? Where, where, where are we going with this? Who is he going to be fighting? He's going to be fighting Garrison? Or is he going to be fighting a, 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 a Brian Pillman Jr.? Or will Malachi Black team up with maybe Andrade El Elios and work with him? I don't know. Maybe he's going to be by himself. I don't know. It's not that I'm interested. I'm just kind of like, weren't you messing with Cody? Weren't you messing with Pac? Shouldn't you be working with Pac? The last match they had together, Pac got gouged in the eye and then sprayed in the eye. His other eye, he's now blind like this. He's a blind bat. So, um, what? why would you do that? Unless Pac is actually hurt or they're trying to keep Pac off TV for a while just to make the story mean something and then they just let him go after the varsity blondes. You guys tell me below. We get the Bucks versus Rocky Mer Romero. About to say Romero. M Romero. I don't know why I'm doing that. Rocky Mer Romero. Mer Romero. 
I know how to say Rocky Romero. Some reason I'm botching. And I think I know why. Because we don't feel Bullet Club versus Chaos. They don't really bring any information in from New Japan Pro Wrestling and show it in vid packs. So I guess the reason why I see Rocky Romero, and I keep botching his name, because it kind of frustrates me. I don't feel it. Guys, when you say Chaos is a New Japan Pro Wrestling, wouldn't it make some sense to show some footage of their regular show, not pay-per-views? To show what Rocky Romero is doing? To show why, why Chuck, as well as Orange Cassidy, is really part of Chaos? Wouldn't it make it more interesting that you actually see a small snippet of New Japan Pro Wrestling television on AEW. If they got a damn partnership, which supposing they are, I want to see it. I'm not asking them to show a full episode of AE, uh, on AEW of New Japan Pro Wrestling. I just want a snippet of why Chaos is going after Bullet Club. I want to know why Bullet Club has a beef with Chaos. And why do I care about Rocky Romero? I don't. So the match was okay. The, the Bucks win fine and they start beating down everybody until we get to see. And I believe I got a shot of it in my face. I got Trent with his mom's van. Well, well what, what is it? Um, I forgot the name. What they usually call minivan. There you go. A minivan coming out, whooping some ass, and he's back. Now, Trent coming back is important. I actually am very happy to see him back. After getting his, what is it, um, spinal fusion, I'm glad he's able to walk, let alone wrestle. I'm, I'm saying this, man. I'm glad he can just walk. And hopefully has normal feeling in all of his extremities, including his neck, let alone wrestling. Because a spinal fusion is no joke. That's dangerous if it's done wrong. So I'm glad he's back. But I'm more glad that he's functional. Now, we have Sammy Guevara have his moment, and then we get a very small, small snippet of a Cody coming out, people are booing him, and he pretty much is saying, hey, congratulations, you've done well, I've spoken to Tony, your next opponent is me, good luck, gives him a hug. And then he does the one thing people got really pissed off about, which they were hoping for, but nope, he ain't giving it to you. He acts like he's about to go down the heel tunnel. He does not. He turns around and goes down the face tunnel. Now, I know one of my subscribers says, hey, he's about to turn heel. I got to tell you this. I'm not going to believe it until I see it. Now, many people are going to say, oh, he's going to be turning heel soon. It's going to happen. And I even said it. Months upon months ago, I said probably if he's going to turn heel, it will not be this year. It will be next year, somewhere in the middle of the year, near the end of the year. Probably that's when he's going to do it. But I do remember there was an article where Cody clearly said, and this was off the cuff, I'm not turning heel, period. I know people want me to turn heel, but I'm not doing it. I'm going to stay face until I retire which will be in a couple of years because I'm not going to work until I'm 40 or 50. I'm going to work until my mid thirties, maybe, maybe near 40. And then I'm stopping. That's what he said. I'm not telling you something that is off my head. He actually did an interview saying this, that he legitimately wants to work until maybe mid thirties into nearly 40. And then he's going to stop and he does not want to turn fa from face to heal. He wants to stay face and end his career as a face. Now, mind you, he can change his mind anytime and fine. Like I said, until I see it, I'm not going to believe it because he's already said in interviews, legitimately shoot interviews, he's going to stay face, period. I think, like I said in a previous video, he wants to be like a Ricky the Dragon steamboat who never turned heel, ever. That's what he really wants to be, a good guy that's loved, but unfortunately he's not getting it. So let's move on. We get, we got two more matches. Well, three, sorry. Let me get this one over. Mm. 
Oh, man. I'm going to leave a link to my Booking the Wrestler, number two, which talks about Rio. Seeing this makes me angry because they really never do anything with Rio. So if you guys want to see an actual story about Rio being booked as a Japanese wrestler, taking what she looks like into account and giving a real story, look below. If you haven't seen it already, take a look at it. And this is about her going up against Jamie Hayter. Not going to take anything away from the match. It was a damn good match. At one point, when she jumped off the top turnbuckle, and that is Rio, she was expecting Hayter to grab her and hold on to her. But let's be honest. We're talking about a 98-pound woman who's jumping at least 12 to 13 feet off the ground. Jumping up and going straight down. Weight increases within a few inches. So she can get up to at least 100, 120, 150 pounds by the time she reaches near the ground. Even if it's not that far, she can gain weight very quickly at a very short distance. And Hader could not grab her and she went splat. She did. Hopefully she's okay. Rio's a one tough little woman. I'm not taking nothing from her. A, a cute 25-year-old woman. You can see in my face. She doesn't look like a kid. She's a full-grown woman. Yes, she doesn't have no boobs. She doesn't have no butt. But that's how some women are. And I'm saying this not because she's Japanese. Because there are regular American women that are pretty much sticks. And there's some women in Japan that are like, Phew. Let's be honest. There are some women that are built like this. Or built there like this. But then, Phew. they are. So Rhea wins. And Britt Baker was not happy about that. She gave her a lockjaw and making it very clear by the time she gets her next match, and I believe that's next week, at um, when uh, winter comes. I am I'm, I know I'm saying it wrong, but when it comes, she's getting a shot. There you go. Now you get the that's it. The, oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. I got angry really bad with Selena Deeps. And Sheeta. I'm sure you've already seen my book in the wrestler episode one, which addresses it. I'm not gonna add it, I'm just adding number two because of Rio. But seeing that, I wish they would do the one about her trying to get her 50th win and only being about deeps. I'm just that's just me. Now, the final match of the night, silver gets a silver. This match for me personally was. The best, second best match of the night. I got to say, Rio and Hater was the best match. For me personally, yes. I'm not saying I like the story of Rio. I don't. Rio's booking sucks. The match quality is not the same as the booking. So if you say, dude, how can you like it when you say that there's a difference between booking, a storyline, and the match quality? I'm just saying it. Now we got Brian Danielson versus John Silva of Dark Order. Johnny Hungy comes out, really not cheered, like properly cheered. It was like mixed. You get a lot of mixed, mu mixed yelling and screaming throughout this show. It isn't 100% stable. They're not that good. I'm not going to lie about it. The fans in Long Island were very mixed. That's how it felt to me personally. It felt somewhat mixed. Yes, during the match, which was actually a very good match, there was no shenanigans. You got straight up wrestling from A, and you see him in my face. This man is the new Kurt Angle. You know why? He's gone through a lot that Kurt Angle's gone through. He had neck problems. He came back, and he's being booked like a dominant heel. Yes, he runs off when he wants to, but when it's time to wrestle, to do the business, he's doing the damn thing business and I love that aspect of Brian Danielson they're not making a chicken shit heel like in WWE oh my gosh or overbearing heel like in Impact Wrestling sometimes they go a little too far with the heelish unlike Moose which has been really well booked but some of the other wrestlers in Impact over the last year or so have been so so admittedly now they are not too bad actually pretty good he is a well built no nonsense, will kick your ass heel. Yes, he's going to play mind games with you. Yes, he's going to fuck with you. But when it's time to get in between the ropes, he doesn't need to cheat. He's that 
damn good. So that's how the match went down. John Silva looked great. He gets a silver because he lost. And in the end, Brian Danielson says simply, look what happened. I took out Uno. I took out Coke Cabana. I took out Angel. I took out everybody I needed to take out. And I kicked the heads in. But wait. I always keep my promise. His head hasn't been kicked in yet. I'm kicking his head in. Because basically, he gave him a pile driver. I forgot what it was called. The name of it. A guard, I think a, um, a Ganya pile driver. I could be wrong about the name. I think I am. But he pretty much nails him with it. And then puts him into submission that knocks him out. He doesn't tap. Which is good for Silver. He doesn't get tapped out. He's knocked out. Gone. He's finished. So getting his head knocked in by foot, fine. And then Adam Page comes out and says, I'm going to kick your ass when it comes to this, when, when winter comes. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to kick your fucking head in. Or kick the shit out of you. But basically, you get my point. A good show. Wasn't bad. It was well booked. And mainly, I'm still not happy about Rio. And I'm not happy about Sheeta and Deeps. And I don't really feel anything from Rocky Romero because I don't feel anything when it comes to the Bullet Club, supposedly, versus Chaos, supposedly, when you don't see any video packages of either one of them talking about, well, when we were in the Bullet Club in New Japan Pro Wrestling, we were like this, and we were like that, and they show maybe a scene of it. They can't tell me New Japan doesn't have old stock footage of how the Bucks used to be. Come on. And Chaos could have something. Come on. Now, mind you, I'm glad Trent is back, but still they need something. And this is just my point of view, and I hope you enjoyed the Zane view. Please give me a comment below. You will be seeing my, if I can, tomorrow. Oh, I got to say this right now. Got to say this right now. Because they just started today. They're putting scaffolding up on the side of the building where I'm living in. They're going to do some type of renovation or work on the building, I think. They're going to probably fix it a little bit. So whenever I do any recordings, there's a possibility there's going to be noise in the background. I'll try my best to keep it from being in there. But I'm going to warn you right now, if I do recordings during the day into the afternoon, if there's noise, it's basically they're doing some type of construction on the building or renovation, whatever. So I'm sorry. I'm just saying it now so you won't be surprised. And I'll say it again in the video. Hopefully I can see NWA tomorrow because I have not been able to see it yet. So when I do see it, I record it. Hopefully it will not be too loud when these guys are working. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.